Hey everyone, it's Leanne Epp. Welcome back to DIY Beauty on Purpose. Today I am working on this beautiful little cabinet that I got off of Marketplace. It was only $8 and it does need some work. I, I mean, it's just, you could tell it's had a rough time, but that's what I'm here for. I'm excited to give it a new look and new life and I can't wait for you to watch. All right, so first thing is first, I am going to sand down the top using a 60 grit sandpaper in my electric sander. And then I'll move up to a 120 and then a 220 to smooth it out. I just want that old finish gone so that I can put a new nice finish on it and, um, and seal it a little bit. The cabinet itself was actually pretty sturdy and in pretty good shape, except that this bottom portion was a little loose, but I just added a few brad nails and it actually made it very, very sturdy, so I was really happy with it. Another thing that I did notice was the top was just a little tilted. I tried fixing it and I just... I. I couldn't figure it out unless I took the whole top off and I didn't want to do that. And overall, I think it just, it just, it just, I guess, went with the age of the cabinet and I just left it as is. Um, actually, the person who purchased it loved it. She thought it just, it was just perfect. She wanted an old looking cabinet and I just really, so I left it like that. So speaking of the top, I am restaining it using Verithane in the Golden Oak and I'm only giving it one coat and then letting it fully dry. I am going to, the inside was very dusty and it had just a lot of debris and stuff. So I'm just cleaning that up to make sure that um, it, you know, it doesn't have that. Um, the inside, I'm not going to touch. I'm not doing anything with it. It looks like it was at some point pre-stained with something, um, but it was actually in pretty good shape. So I left it as is. The outside veneer did have some of it um, that had chipped off. So I'm just using some putty to fill it in and then let it dry overnight so that I can sand it down. So now I am actually going to clean, clean the inside using crud cutter, making sure that it is now um, grime free, dirt free, and, and it's just, and it smells good too. <laughs> we don't want anything stinky. I am going to remove the hardware before um, I paint. And of course I am going to tape the trim, the top, because it is freshly stained and I want to make sure that no paint gets on it. I am using Milk Paint by Rust-Oleum. This is in their, oh gosh, what's the color? I forget what the color is. I'll have it linked down below. But it's like this yellowy mustard color and I'm going to be very honest, I was not a fan <laughs> when I first applied it. On the In the can, look at, in the can it looks beautiful, but when I Put it on the actual cabinet I was like oh my gosh I don't like this it is too I don't know I just didn't like it and I'm used to working with chalk paint which has it's very thick and it has really good coverage from the very first coat and milk paint does not do that um, so another thing that I was just not a fan of however I will say that I, I did have to add four coats which was very tasking and thank God this was a small cabinet. <laughs> but um, in the end, after the four coats and you'll see it here in a minute, it was actually very beautiful. So I am happy you know, with the end result. It was just a lot more work than I'm used to when I'm painting furniture. But 
that's just how it is with different paints and different things. I am a fan of Rust-Oleum. Um, it's just with the milk paint, it's just a little different. And maybe too, it was just the undertone of the cabinet, but who knows? But again, in the end, it actually turned out very pretty. So there's what four coats look like. See, very pretty. It does look like what was in the can. <laughs> I'm adding a stencil to the front. This is a French um, Cafe Paris stencil that I have had for a while and have used in several projects. I am using black paint and I believe the black paint that I use is just regular like latex paint and I'm just using a stencil brush um, and that's it. I mean pretty much just that and then I'm going to get on to distressing. I did get some bleed through on the trim of course from the paint but I just sanded it down. I did take the excess um, paint that was on the stenciling brush and I'm just dry brushing it over the knob i just wanted it to have a little bit more of a grungy look so that's just what i did all right so on to distressing i am distressing with a 220 grit sandpaper and the palm sander and here's the part where i love about chalk paint it distressed beautifully um it could have definitely stayed as is you you know i didn't have to distress it but if you have followed me for a while you know that i really love the distress style but if it's not for you you can certainly leave um the furniture as is but just look how beautiful it's distressing it just looks like it has been old and weathered for a long time and that's what i love i even distressed over the stencil so it just kind of goes with saying hey this is just a very old vintage cabinet and i really loved that the cabinet did have a surface that was very textured so that did help with the distressing uh, but it's just distressed very nicely so here after i have sanded everything dusted everything make sure everything's dust free i am now sealing it with a polyurethane and i gave it two coats on the actual cabinet but on the top I gave it four coats of the polyurethane wanting to make sure that um, it's very durable and um, I am using a brush for um, and these brushes oh my god I think they're nylon nylon brushes are very soft um, but for the top I'm using the sponge applicator I have most of these products linked in down below in the description box on my Amazon store if you're interested in taking a look at them So I'm going to remind you here what that cabinet looked like before and this is what it looks like now. I love this little cabinet. I think it has so much character. You can just see the age of it. Um, yes, the top is tilted and it still bothers me sometimes. But hey, the person who bought it loved it and loved the character. So that's all that matters. And I am so thankful for you watching. I'm so thankful that you stopped by. If this is your first time watching, I welcome and I ask that if you have not subscribed yet, that you consider doing so. I post video every single week and I would love for you to become part of our YouTube family. Thanks again and I hope you have a blessed day.